Well, joining us uh, now from our studios in Nairobi to give us an update on the Kenyan uh, markets is Anthony Kimani, who is research analyst at Genghis Capital. Good afternoon to you, Anthony. Uh, the, there's still talk about the uncertainty uh, over the, uh, the ruling on the presidential election. We were told yesterday that we might have clarity on that today. So any further progress on that? Well, today what we saw was the, the evidence has started being presented at the courts. So we are at that case where we are at that stage where lawyers are actually arguing out their cases. And yes, the, the political uncertainty is still the dark cloud that's hovering over our markets. And we saw a lot of subdued activity today, but we are still having demand on certain counters. Um, especially the blue chips. So uh, on the political front, it's basically just the cases that will, and as we await the judgment on end of the week, probably on Friday, or, but it can go up to Sunday. So we'll still have to wait on that. I've, I've asked your colleagues uh, earlier in the week to make a call on this, and the consensus seems to be that it's 50-50. The, the market and anyone else for that I mean, can't really predict how this is going to turn out. What's your view? On the case or about the market? No, on the case. Uh, on the case. Um, today we had uh, opposing counsel presenting some evidence, and it seems to favor Raila Odinga to some extent, but of course we'll have to wait and see how the other side argues tomorrow. So, yeah, uh, it's still 50-50. I'd also have to agree with them on that. Right. Okay, well, let's look at some yeah. of those counters uh, on the exchange. As you say, uh, it's been depressed, but uh, there has been interest in some of the blue chips. What's caught your eye? Um, today, in terms of counters that actually moved up, uh, we were very impre impressed with Centum. Um, it actually hit a high of 2025 uh, because we believe investors are starting to recognize that it's been an undervalued counter for a while. Um, it's been trading below its book value and you know Centum always lags the market. So when, or the, Centum's earnings always lag the market. So when the market performs well as it did last year, we are likely to see that reflected on its earnings this year. They also acquired Calbank. Um, in Nigeria, they own a stake of about 8% in that. And that counter has also been doing well. So as they go towards their results announcement, we are expecting that they'll probably report higher earnings than they did last year. So th that one caught our eye a little. Another one that certainly catches the eye is the results from CIC Insurance Group, which I'm just looking at here. Uh, some quite big swings yeah. in their numbers. Gross premiums written increased by 34% from 2011 into 2012. And they talk about uh, that's uh, being due to the acquisition of new business. That's a lot of new business for an insurance company. Yes, uh, CIC has been growing well. It seems like the cooperative model has been working well with them. And you know CIC has always focused on what you call microinsurance and the lower income segment of, the, of, the, of society. So it's been actually trying to provide insurance to the underinsured. Then it seems to have worked well. You mentioned that premiums were up from nine billion, uh, up to nine billion from six billion recorded last year. We also saw profits jump by about one hundred and thirty-seven percent to one point six billion from six hundred from seven hundred million last year. So that's also a big jump there. They've also started a new a new division of, uh, on asset management. Uh, they had assets under management of about two billion, which is good for a new company because it ranks them at about fourth place. So that's why we are seeing the huge increase in the in the earnings. Um, yeah. Well, looking also at the other numbers that they've got, claims incurred grew by 47% uh, to 4.6 billion shillings, management expenses up by 30%. Is that a function of a business that's growing? Uh, I mean, is their cost control pretty good? Uh, yeah, because, well, their gross return premiums were actually just about industry average, so that's no, there's, no, there's not a lot of concern there from us. Um, and in regards to commissions that were also up by about 15%, we guess uh, it would have to be the growth in the business because you know insurance in Kenya is 
primarily driven through agency sales and so you'd expect a lot of costs going into that and also the segment that they they focus on is actually what you'd call it's a very low margin business so you're actually seeing them um, sort of try to profit from this by bundling their products for instance trying relying a lot on mobile telephony using their MBIMA product so yeah so that's how they are able to contain some of their costs but we guess I guess the performance is actually is actually commendable given the low margin business that they focus on well, uh, the market seems to have taken it in its stride. Uh, the share remained flat at 5.45. Then uh, I know dividends are important to Kenyan investors. BOC Kenya has cut its dividend despite uh, recording a 31% profit. Now, investors would ask a question about that. Uh, basically, as a growing company, uh, it would be more prudent to sort of retain the dividend instead of paying it out to shareholders. And because of the growth that they actually targeting, they've said that next year they expect about 12 to underwrite about 12 billion um, from the 9 billion that they did this year. So we're expecting that as a growing company, um, the retention of dividend is actually very favorable to the shareholders in terms of value creation going forward. Okay, so it's uh, rather different to what the numbers suggest. Just uh, broadly there, Anthony, there's a survey of uh, companies, what they expect from the economy. Certainly business confidence seems very good. Uh, this survey of companies in Kenya indicates people expect uh, the economy to grow by more than the official estimates and uh, a fifth of the uh, banks and uh, non-bank companies, they expect growth of more than 6% in the economy. Are they being realistic? Um, I would say 6% is a bit on the higher side. We'd probably put the growth at somewhere between 45 to 5.5% 5 .5 according to our estimates. And basically what people have cited as the key growth drivers would probably be the uptake of credit because um, interest rates have actually come down this year if you were to compare that to last year so we're expecting that companies are sort of taking advantage of the lower rates but remember that it all, it all depends or it all hinges on how the election how the election petition goes and how and how we transition from that to the new government so it's still, I'd still say 5% is a fair estimate uh, in terms of growth this year.